Our first guest joins us to discuss President-elect Donald Trump's choice to lead the FBI, as well as President Biden pardoning his son Hunter. We welcome former Assistant U.S. Attorney Roy Herrera with Herrera Ariano LLP, former federal prosecutor. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. What do you think happened? Why did President Biden change his mind? Well, I, you know, he said in his statement, I think he expressed, a, I think, an understandable, very real emotion as a father uh, in trying to protect his son. So I think the easiest explanation is that, that he, you know, basically was looking towards a uh, Trump administration uh, with a new uh, attorney general and said that he wanted to protect his son. He also said in his statement, of course, that he felt that his son was unfairly prosecuted to begin with uh, and that his son was only prosecuted because he happened to be his son. Um, so I think that is probably the easiest answer. That doesn't necessarily make it right. I agree with a lot of the things that Congressman Stanton just said um, about the, the appearance of this, um, on whether this was fair. Um, and of course, it goes. He's going against what he said, you know, during the last couple of years, in that he wouldn't actually uh, pardon his son, and so something clearly changed. Will this be a stain on his legacy, or will people sometimes um, soften their stance as time goes by, or they start to look at maybe past presidents, the actions of other presidents? So I think that's how it's ultimately going to be looked at. If you look over history, even the prior uh, president, President Trump, who's now going to be the future president, uh, he, you know, controversially pardoned certain individuals, including his son-in-law's father. Um, if you look even further to President Clinton, you know, he also uh, pardoned uh, people that were close to him, you know, family, et cetera. So we have seen, I think, that President um, misused the pardon power, at least in my view. Uh, I think this is also a similar example to that. But ultimately, I think people are going to forget about that in some ways and just think about the overall four years when it comes to judging his legacy. Well, there's a lot of news for people to forget about things quickly. And let's move on to Kash Patel, who is President-elect Trump's pick to lead the FBI. Controversial has been a word that's often been used to describe him. What can you tell us about him and what maybe your expectations are for him? So it's certainly a controversial pick, um, and I think it's controversial for a couple of reasons. One, I think when you look at his resume, you know, opponents, I think, would sort of point out that it's a very thin resume when it comes to sort of what he's done in his career. He's a pretty undistinguished uh, public defender and prosecutor. Most of his career has actually been working for Republican elected officials, including Donald Trump. He, he was part of the, that first administration. And the most sort of distinguished thing about him is that he's a loyalist, right? I mean, he has gone on sort of right-wing TV. I think he even has a children's book in which that he's authored in which Donald Trump is the hero of that book. So he's very, very loyal to Trump. So in, in some sense, it makes sense that Trump picked him. It kind of goes along with what he's done with some of the other picks uh, so far. So that's, that's one reason why it's controversial. The other reason, though, I think, which is even more important, is that I think there are concerns about what he may do as the FBI director. He has indicated that he sort of believes in this deep state conspiracy. Um, he's indicated that, you know, potentially political opponents at the FBI need to be fired, uh, sort of in the name of FBI reform. Um, and he's also indicated that the FBI could be used to go after political opponents, whether they be in government, uh, whether it be members of the media, or whether they be sort of uh, Democratic elected officials. So all of that, I think, has people very, very worried about what he's going to do if he becomes FBI director. So we were talking a little bit before the show started about your experience and sort of how you felt that most of your colleagues, your direct colleagues, were not political in their jobs. They were very much there to do their job and, and not to favor anybody in particular. So how does having a director, somebody leading an agency who has been very vocal in terms of, I guess, identifying as a loyalist, how would that potentially change things? Well, it's concerning because, in my experience, I, I have worked with what you would sort of call career civil servants. These are individuals that work at the Department of Justice or at the FBI over a long period of time, sometimes decades. So they're working under multiple presidents of both political parties. They generally don't have a political bias, at least that they express in their professional, you know, activity. Um, and so having someone at the top that's going to try to wade through that and potentially get rid of people that they don't believe are actually going to help the president um, is a concern. And that's precisely, I mean, if you're going back to the Patel example, that's precisely why under federal law we have a rule that FBI directors are supposed to serve for 10 years. Because again, the idea is if an FBI director serves for 10 years, they're going to serve under multiple presidents, but perhaps multiple presidents of different parties. Um, and therefore, they're not going to be able to be biased towards any particular president or political party. It's the same idea with civil service. And that's sort of how we've operated really for, for many decades at the federal level. And so again, the concern is that uh, appointees from Trump, whether it be Patel, or his nominee for the attorney general are going to come in and say all these people need to go and they need to be replaced with people that we find sufficiently loyal.
And quickly, I just do want to point out that the current FBI director was appointed by Trump. I think it was 2017, so he did serve under the Biden administration. What do you expect will happen when it comes time for um, Congress to consider Patel? Well, it's going to be interesting. I mean, he's probably going to start interviewing with the various senators. He'll meet with our two uh, Democratic senators here from the state of Arizona. Um, of course, he's going to be questioned in a committee where he's going to have to answer some of his questions about his personal views. And of course, again, more importantly, what he wants to do with the FBI uh, if he becomes a director. And there'll be a vote. And it's going to be a very tight Senate. It's going to be Republican controlled, we know. Um, but it'll be a narrow majority. And of course, there's going to be a couple of Republican senators, whether it be Susan Collins or Lisa Murkowski, who have demonstrated at least some independence from Trump. They're going to be the ones that ultimately decide whether he gets to the 50 votes that he needs. Roy Herrera, thank you so much. I suspect uh, you will be back discussing this again. Thank you in very the much. Future. Thank you.